Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I'm Bob Fowler and what an honor and privilege it is to be with you at the time of this live stream Thursday. I'm pretty sure it's Thursday. I told my wife last night, I said, this week has flown by and it certainly has. Well, I'm flying solo today. I don't have my grand dog with me. I hope you all enjoyed the pictures and seeing him at the end of the program yesterday. As I said yesterday, and I will repeat, probably even stronger, we sure love that guy. <laughs> but we pray that this program is finding you, either you watching it on the live stream or on the rebroadcast, well-blessed, highly favored, prospered, all that God has for you in this moment of your life for you to see and understand, we pray this program is finding you well. Well, today I want to get right into it because I'm not going to keep you long. So I want to encourage you to stick with me, but I'm going to talk about something that I have found very beneficial to my life. And maybe some of you can give me a thumbs up or an amen and be a witness to the truth of what we're talking about. I'm talking about forget about it. Come on. Some of us have watched some movies in the past where we hear this either from the original movie or repeated subsequently in multiple media, uh, uh, media platforms or movies, this phrase, forget about it, forget it. Now, it may mean something a little bit different in the movies, but today I want to look from a scriptural perspective of having spiritual amnesia by being able, and, and let me just say this, and you're going to see in the Apostle Paul's life that out of all of the things that he had learned to do, the number one thing that he had learned to do was to forget. Now, I know, especially in my age bracket and north, from 55 north, uh, the thought of being forgetful is a bad thing. I mean, who has not seen the commercials for Prevagen having trouble remembering things? Did you forget to lose to to find uh, where you left your keys? Prevagen can help you. You know, when we think about being forgetful, we always seem to think of it in negative terms. But I want to tell you, when you look into the scripture as we're going to today, being forgetful is a good thing. And being forgetful is a thorough thing. But it also requires your and my participation. Come on. We like to think that God has done everything. Oh, he's done everything that he's going to do. But my friend, there is still something for you and I to do. We're called to walk out the promises of God's word with faith and patience. That's something for us to do. Well, when we get to this area of what we're talking about today, about forgetting, it is upon us. Will God help us? Oh, certainly he will. He's given the Holy Spirit to enable us not only to do this, which we're talking about today, but he's given the Holy Spirit to help us walk out the word, to walk out the promises of God's word, to believe them, to speak them, to stand upon them, and to see them come to pass in our lives. Let's get into this this morning or today. <laughs> In Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, the Holy Spirit, through the hand of Paul, but certainly Paul's testimony and experience can be seen and found and heard in these verses. Paul said, not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I, now, now let me just stop right there because I can hear some saying, well, now, wait a minute, we have everything and we've already been, uh, we're, we're complete in him. Yeah, we're complete in him, but that's not speaking of our soul, our mind, will, and our emotions, the part that you and I are extremely familiar with 
in this life. It's the, it's the part of us that our feelings get hurt. It's the part of us that we learn to forget in. And so while Paul's saying that not that I've already been made perfect, he's not speaking of himself in the spirit because at Paul's writings, he said, I am, we are complete in him and I am sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So Paul understood that he was a triune being. He was a spirit that had a soul that lived in a mortal flesh suit, a body that one day, uh, let me put it this way. Your spirit has been saved. Your soul is being saved and your flesh shall be saved at the resurrection. Now, when was your spirit saved? Well, theoretically, it was saved at the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But it was applied to you when you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Immediately, your spirit man, the part of you that you've never seen before, was washed, cleansed, perfected, made holy, sanctified, made righteous, and then sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. So, your spirit has been saved. Your soul man, your mind, your will, and your emotions, that part of you is being saved, is being changed, is being transformed, is, is learning to walk in who you presently are in the spirit because of what Christ has done and because now the Holy Spirit has sealed that part of you. Now, is your soul being saved, being saved in the sense of preparation for salvation? No, it's coming into agreement and an alignment with who you already are in your spirit. Different denominations call it different things. Sanctification. Some people believe in instantaneous sanctification. Well, that is true in your spirit, but not in your soul. I believe in progressive sanctification, not in your spirit, but in your soul. You see, your spirit man is not changing. Your your soul man is growing in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and learning. And certainly what we're talking about today is a part of what we are learning to do. So, probably spent a little too much time on that, but maybe some of you needed to hear that. Not that I've already attained, Philippians 3, 12 through 14, or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I, knew, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but watch this, but this one thing I do. Now, if the apostle Paul breaks out a line like that, I want to listen. I mean, because the apostle Paul was used to write two thirds of the New Testament. The Apostle Paul said, had a great and incredible relationship with God as a result of what had happened in his life and his encounter with Christ Jesus. So when the Apostle Paul says, but this one thing, in other words, if I couldn't do one other thing, this is the one thing that I would want to do. But this one thing I do, mm, ears perked up, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So, if the Apostle Paul could do one thing, if he could master one thing, it would be this that we're talking about today, to be able to forget. Now, again, so, so many of us have a definition already ingrained within our mind of what it means to forget. 
we think of something, I forgot where I left my keys, I forgot where I left my wallet, I forgot where I left my car. I mean, you know, we, we think of these things, but typically we, we subliminally have interjected within that definition recovery. I forgot where I lost my keys, ha, ah, but thank the Lord I'll eventually find them. I forgot where I left my car, but guess what? I just pushed the key fob and the horn goes off and I found it. Listen, when the Bible talks about forgetting, it doesn't talk about it forgiving and retrieval of what you have forgotten. Let's look at something. Forget in, or forgetting in verse 13, this is what it means, okay? And tell me if you hear clearly stated or even implied retrieval or recovery of what you've forgotten. To forget by neglecting, now let me just stop and say something. When we forget something, it's not as the result, oh, I've neglected something, so I guess I forgot something. Okay, I want us to understand clearly what this is talking about. To forget by neglecting, no recurring caring for, Forgotten, given over to oblivion, uncared for. Now, I want to illustrate this. Whether you have or haven't, I believe that you can wrap this word forget around this definition. You have two seeds that you plant in a garden. Okay? Same seed. You plant them in a garden. And one of them you are just very attentive. You water it. You make sure that it gets the right amount of sunlight. You, you, you are just very repetitious in your care for that seed. However, the other one, you neglect it. You neglect it by forgetting that it is even there. It's still there, but you have totally neglected what you are pouring upon that other seed in the garden. What do you think is going to happen? The one that you have watered is going to grow and thrive. The other one won't even sprout and come above the earth. Why? Because you have forgotten. It's as if it's not even there. And how have you assured that it will not grow in your life? You have robbed it from all that is necessary to cause that seed to grow and thrive. Now, let me share something. And, and this is just one area but you can apply this to other aspects of your life. We have all had people in our lives that we recognize and realize are unhealthy for us in our walk, our life, our joy, our peace, our growth track in the Lord. Now, what do most people do? As Christians, we don't wanna be offensive, we don't want to be rude. We don't want to come across as not Christ-like. And so we continue in an unhealthy relationship. Well, that is not in line with the definition of forget. To forget means to be neglectful. To forget means to set aside any attention that you would otherwise heap or lean toward or cast upon toward that un unhealthy relationship. You see, to forget something means to choke it out, means to starve it, means to cause it to die where it is at. Now you say, man, that doesn't sound much like a Christ-like attitude. 
Oh, my friend. I want to encourage you. When you read your Bible, understand that there are certain moments. You know, I love when in the early church, when the Apostle Paul was, he was made aware of a brother in the church that was not behaving himself right. And he was not open to correction or had a, he did not have a repentant attitude. You know what Paul's attitude was? Well, let's just love him, coddle him. You know what Paul's attitude was? I turn him over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh so that his soul would be saved. Now, can you imagine if any pastor across America or anywhere else in the world were, were to be dealing with a brother or a sister in the Lord and they just were not repentant, they, didn't, they, they, they would not uh, humble themselves and admit their blame or take ownership. Can you imagine a pastor standing up on a Sunday morning and say, before I preach my sermon this morning, I just want you to know that Jim, Joe, Sally, Susie, I'm turning them over to Satan for the destruction of their flesh so that their soul would be saved. Can you imagine? (laughs) Uh, Have we drifted from biblical principles, biblical truths, even in what we're talking about today? The ability to recognize unhealthy people in your life and forget about them. (laughs) Maybe right now there's people that have hurt you, done you wrong, and you perpetuate the pain because you keep talking about it. You keep recognizing it. And in essence, you continue to water it so that it thrives throughout your life. You're going to need to learn to forget about it. Stop. How, you say, how do you water a seed in the natural? Well, you get water and you pour it upon it. How do you water a seed in the supernatural? Glad you asked me. Through the words of your mouth. You see, whatever you're talking about will thrive, and whatever you're not talking about will die. Mm, let me say that again. Whatever you're talking about in your life today will thrive. And whatever you don't talk about will die. Have you ever talked about food for so long over a period of minutes and hours that you got to go out either right after work or for lunch and you got to buy that food? You start thinking about chocolate cake and you start talking about chocolate cake. You know, the other day, the thought popped in my mind about Oreos. And I just thought about Oreos so much until I talked about Oreos. Well, guess what I ended up doing? I went out and bought me some Oreos. And I'll just tell you, for those of you that are curious, they were good. (laughs) My point is this, whatever you talk about is going to thrive and manifest in your life. And whatever you do not talk about or recognize will die. It's as simple as that. Is there anybody in your life that the Holy Spirit has touched upon that are unhealthy, not beneficial toward your growth track in God? If so, you're going to need to quickly take care of the issue, cease watering the relationship, stop trying to ease out of that relationship, and just choke it out until it's done. And then don't even recognize it. Don't even bring it back up. It may be a past experience. Oh, so-and-so, every time you hear their name, you talk about how they hurt you, how they wounded you. You're going to have to stop that. Why? Because whatever you speak about will thrive and whatever you don't speak about will die. And you can apply this in every aspect of your life. You rarely talk about the Lord. Guess who's not thriving in your life? You know, it it works and it's applied to every aspect of our lives. So I want to encourage you. I want, I want, speak about who you want to be. 
you need to lose 10 pounds. I thank you, Lord. I see myself dropping that 10 pounds. I see myself healthier. Don't talk about where you are. Talk about where you want to be. Whatever you speak about will thrive and whatever you don't will die. So apply this today in forgetting about it wherever it is needful. Can you imagine a person who is divorced and gets remarried and they're constantly talking about their previous husband or wife? Not good. Not going to turn out well at all. So I want to encourage you, talk about what God has for you. Talk about what uh, what the blessings of the Lord are for your life. I thank you that it's God's will for me to be blessed, prospered, highly favored of Him, dripping with favor. Speak God's word over your life. You can never go wrong if you do that. Forget those things that God wants you to forget and seize hold of what God has for you right now. I want to encourage you, my friend. Don't drag the bad stuff with you. Carry the good stuff throughout the rest of your life. And you will be the better for it. And so will the kingdom of God. Hey, I pray today's program has been a blessing to you and an encouragement. Not only this program, but all of the other programs. I want to encourage you. Go to our YouTube channel. That's at Faith is the Victory Fellowship YouTube and subscribe. Come on, we have all kinds of content on on there that will be an extreme source of encouragement and blessing for you. Hey, before I go, I want to ask you, go into the description. (laughs) I, I lost track of how to say the word description. Go into the description section right after the program, and there are very simplistic ways for you to be a blessing back to the ministry of Faith is a Victory Fellowship. We are here because God has placed us here, but we're sustained and we grow because of people like you that say, I want to advance the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. Why? Because I believe in the message of the good news of a life without fear. Won't you take a moment and be a contributor? Don't just be a taker, be a giver, amen? We love you, God loves you, and as always, my friend, never forget, He is faithful.